Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Power Sensor Trace Measurements. In this short presentation, we'll discuss the basic concepts behind making trace, or power versus time measurements, using an RF power sensor. If you're unfamiliar with the general concepts of RF power measurements, it might be a good idea to watch the presentation, Understanding Basic Power Sensor Measurements, before continuing with this presentation. In most cases, when we use a power sensor, the measurement result is simply power, for example, minus 12.79 dBm, reported either one time or as a continuous average. All power sensors can do this, and it's what most people think of when we talk about making power measurements. We can also plot these power values versus time to get a general trend, with our time axis being on the order of seconds or even minutes. Again, all power sensors can do this. But certain types of diode-based or receiver-based power sensors can measure power quickly enough to also plot or trace the measured power. This allows us to see fine details of the measured signal over time, also called a signal envelope. Our axis in this case is on the order of milliseconds or microseconds. Viewing a signal's trace or envelope is particularly useful when we're measuring so-called pulsed signals, and this is one of the most common and most important applications of trace measurements. All diode-based sensors can display the trace or envelope of a signal, including pulse signals. However, if we want to do pulse analysis, we need a special kind of diode-based sensor, namely a wideband power sensor. By pulse analysis, we mean things like pulse rise time and fall time, pulse period, etc. The characteristics of wideband power sensors are somewhat different than those of other sensor types. As mentioned, wideband power sensors support an automatic pulse analysis function. They also have a very high sampling rate, usually tens of millions of samples per second, which gives them a time resolution in the low tens of nanoseconds. All of this, however, does come at a cost. Wideband sensors normally have both a lower measurement range than other diode-based sensors, and they also tend to have slightly higher measurement uncertainty. Remember that if you want to analyze pulses and quantify pulse parameters, a wideband power sensor is often the best choice. There are many different pulse parameters that can be analyzed and measured using a wideband power sensor. The most basic measurements of pulse signals include things like the width of the pulses and the spacing between the pulses. One way we could do this is to use markers and manually measure pulse width and the pulse repetition interval, but this is a time-consuming and error-prone process. This is why most wideband power sensors have an automatic pulse analysis function that can quickly and accurately determine the most important parameters of pulse signals. There are many different parameters that can be automatically measured or calculated on pulse signals, so let's take a quick tour of the more important ones. Peak power, average power, and minimum pulse power should be fairly self-explanatory. In terms of timing, pulse period and pulse width should also be easy to understand. Pulse rise and pulse fall time are very commonly measured parameters. And finally, overshoot and undershoot are important because these phenomena are often seen in real-world pulses. In most cases, pulses are being transmitted continuously by the source, and it's not easy to make measurements on these moving signals. In order to freeze time-varying signals, we use something called a trigger. If you've ever used an oscilloscope, the concept is very similar. Triggering can be done in different ways, including using an external signal as a trigger, but a level trigger is the most commonly used method when measuring pulse signals. We specify a trigger level with a certain power, and whether or not we're triggering on the rising or falling edge of the signal. When the measured signal meets or exceeds this level, the trigger is activated, and we have a stable signal that we can measure. So in summary, a trace measurement is a very high resolution representation of a signal's power versus time, usually over periods of milliseconds or microseconds. This trace is sometimes called the envelope of the signal. The most common application of trace measurements made with power sensors is the analysis of pulse signals, such as those used in radar. All diode-based sensors can make trace measurements, but wideband power sensors are needed for pulse parameter analysis and automatic pulse measurements of things like pulse width, pulse period, rise time, overshoot, etc. And finally, remember that triggering is normally required to make trace measurements on time-varying signals. This concludes our presentation Understanding Power Sensor Trace Measurements. Thanks for watching.